Good morning, good morning. I'll try that again. Good morning, good morning. All right, you guys stand up. Let's worship the King. Just want to start out this morning singing about his goodness, how good he is. Well, we acknowledge your goodness this morning. We acknowledge your presence. And we just give ourselves to you this morning, Lord. I pray that you're glorified in our songs. Uh, I pray that you just speak to our hearts this morning. And as you speak, Lord, may we listen and may we respond. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. just says you keep on getting better this weekend I, I had a big gig that I was getting ready for I'm loading everything into my truck and I have YouTube videos playing and this song comes on on my TV in my living room and I'm trying to I'm running late but I literally had to just stop so I had like my own little just this little worship session in the middle of loading gear at home this weekend and this song it just says you keep on getting better it says I will sing of your goodness I will sing of your love though the seasons come quickly you have always been enough and though the night may get darker though the waiting may seem long you have always been faithful to remind me of your love and for me this weekend while I was loading equipment there's just this moment where I, don't, I feel like the Lord was just like hey hey Kurt I love you and and my prayer this morning is that maybe this morning the Lord would kind of poke you and say hey hey you hey I'm here hey I love you I see what's going on in your life and I haven't left you I love you be reminded this morning that he loves you because I'm telling you he, he just kind of poked me in the middle of my living room while I'm running in and out of the door one thinking about that I was thinking about a gig I was like this is gonna be fun and he's like hey hey Kirk I love you and I literally sat down on my couch and was like Lord you are good and so this morning I pray that you're reminded of his goodness and I pray that he pokes you and stirs up um, just the feeling and knowing that you are loved so sing this with us this morning Keep 
I'm a little different right now. There's this crazy thing called clapping your hands. You ready? All right, so we're going to do it. Let's do just the drums and keys real quick. Just real quick. And you're going to kill it. You ready? So God is good, and y'all say all the time. Then I say all the time. God is good. So let's try that again. Hold on. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that your peace and it I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are Father, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 Searching. 
Perfect in all of your ways to 
a huge need for my Father God. Without Him, I am nothing. But He made me to be something just like He made each one of you to be something. I encourage you, don't miss the opportunity to crawl in His lap and be loved and be filled and be whole with Him. When you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your head is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of Mary Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out and right now. And I know you're able. And my You never lost a battle. 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 You never lost
Because we talked about last week, we talked about last week how maybe it's not our faith that keeps us from breaking through. Maybe it's just us not understanding his authority. And, and this song right here, if there's a song that can put you in perspective of how big God is, this is it. Because he's never lost. So I want you guys to do something for me. If you're going through something right now, if there's a battle you're dealing with right now, spiritual, natural, it doesn't matter. I just want you to come up front this morning. Come on. Come on. sing that again okay I want to sing that again and I want you guys up here because you're, you're coming to God come on you are coming to God this morning he's got your heart he knows what you need he knows what you're here for I don't have to know but you came up here for God this morning so we're going to sing this one more time and then I'm going to pray for you okay we're going to go through this chorus one more time and I want you to think about your battle I want you to think about what you're dealing with from God's perspective. Come on, not your perspective anymore. Not a perspective of, I'm dealing with this, but a perspective of, I've won this. Come on, I've already won this. So let's sing this this morning from a perspective of God's perspective. Amen? Think about it while you're singing that he's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Come on.
Cause you never lost a battle You never lost a battle And I know, and I know You never win Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, come on Y'all got more, y'all got more than that Come on Woo. So do something for me all you guys that are up here, you've got something that you're dealing with. You've got a battle you're going through. I'm going to pray for you, but I just want you to take your hand and lay it on your heart this morning. Just lay it on your heart this morning. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Father God. Thank you, Father. Father, you see every battle that's going on this morning, Father. You see every heart this morning, Father, crying out for you, Father, knowing that you've never lost a battle, Father. Knowing that you've never lost a battle, Father, and the battle that they're dealing with, Father, they're going to turn to you today, Father. They're here for you, Lord. And Father, because you've never lost a battle, Father, we will not lose this battle, Lord. Lord, we have victory through you. We have victory through your name, Father. You've already completed it, Father. Father, I thank you for every heart this morning, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every marriage that's healed. I thank you for every job that's restored. I thank you for every business that's rising up. I thank you, Father, that every heart in this place, Father, that is broken, that you're healing, Father. I thank you that the scars may be there, Father, but the healing is before it, Lord. Father, I thank you the wounds that the devil has caused are healing, Father. Lord, I thank you for physical healing in the name of Jesus, Father. 1 Peter 2.24 said that by your stripes, Father, we are already been healed, Lord. So I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for mental healing, for spiritual healing, Father. Maybe, maybe some up here, Father, have been hurt through the years spiritually, Father. And maybe they don't realize that it's a spiritual healing that they need. So, Father, restore that this morning. Father, let this be a house of restoration, Father. Lord, that you will restore us back to you, Father. What the devil has tried to steal, what the devil has tried to take away, no more, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bind that devil in every situation in the name of Jesus. And Father, we loose healing this morning. That you heal every heart, every family, every marriage, every job, every situation, Father, that they're going through right now, Father. They are healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Now, Lord, I just ask you right now. Tell them all you love them, Father. Lord, speak to their hearts directly, Father. Just tell them you love them. Father, wrap your arms around them. Father, the battle may not end today, but it will, and when it does, Father, we are victorious. Come on, we are victorious in Jesus' name. We are victorious through the blood of Jesus. Father, I plead the blood over each and every situation that it covers them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. Lord, I cover all of their businesses. I cover all their property. I cover all their situations in the name of Jesus. That that blood, Father, that was shed on Calvary is the blood, Father, that flows for us today. And Father, through that blood, Lord, we have restoration. Father, through that blood, we have transformation. Father, and through that blood, we have reconciliation, Father. Oh, Jesus. Father, you said to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. So, Father, we just, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you. Go ahead and thank you for your situation. Thank you for the end result. Thank you for what you need. Thank you for where it's going in life, not where you're at. Thank you for what's coming. When you thank God for something that's already happened, 
That's gratitude. But when you thank God for a situation that hasn't happened yet, that's faith. And faith pleases God. So, Father, we thank you that every battle in this place is won in the name of Jesus. I thank you that no devil in hell can stop us from winning this victory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. And Lord, we just praise you this morning. Oh, we just praise you, Father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for restoration, Father. Restoration in the name of Jesus, Father. Devil, you thought you won. You thought you had him beat down. But God. Come on, but God. But God this morning. Come on. God is a God of restoration. Come on. Come on. God is a God of healing. Come on this morning. Yeah. something this morning. One more thing. Just one more thing this morning. Okay? Everybody look at me. Everybody that's up here, look at me. You guys in the back, look up here at me. Because I need you guys with us, okay? So when they marched around Jericho, they had to do it for seven days, right? One time a day, and on the seventh day, God said, I need you to do it seven times. I need you to multiply what you've been doing on the last day. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You need to multiply what you're doing on the last day. And on that seventh time, he said, he told everybody, now listen, I need you to be quiet until I tell you. Come on, until I tell you to yell. Until I tell you that the victory is ours. You see, he told them to yell before the walls fell. Oh, come on. Did y'all hear me? He said to yell before the walls fell this morning. Come on. You're still looking at a wall this morning. Uh Uh-oh, you're still still looking at a wall this morning, wondering how God's going to get you through it. And God said, I just need one more thing from you this morning. Come on, I need one more thing from you this morning. I need a yell of victory this morning. Come on, I need a yell of victory this morning. So I need one more thing from you this morning. Are you ready? I think you know what it is, but I'm going to ask anyway. Come on, we need a yell of victory this morning. We need a yell of victory this morning. Come on this morning. Yes! Yes! Woo! Thank you, Lord. Something else I want you to know about your Jericho. (laughs) Something else I want you to know about the battle. You see, when when God said to to raise your voice up, he he, he brought the walls down in a way that it never brought down before. You see, we think walls of falling, right? 
We think of block going everywhere and brick going everywhere and getting in the way of things, right? That we got to step over this and step over that and try to do that. But here's what God did to Jericho. God took Jericho's walls and he sunk them in the ground. He said, you don't even have to step over the rubble. He said, I'll make a way for you. Come on, y'all. The walls this morning, guys, God's sinking them down. He's giving them a place that now it's a pathway to victory. You don't even have to step over anything. God's going to make a way where there was no way. He's going to make a place where there was no place. A victory where the devil said you're going to fail, God said you're going to win. So lift your hands this morning. Father God, hallelujah. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. I have victory in the name of Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for victories in the battle today. God, I ask that you show up and show out as only you can do it. Father, that when people look at our lives, they're wondering, how did you get through it? Only God can get the victory. Father, you're truly an amazing God. Oh, God. Oh, Father. Lord, I thank you for every heart this morning. I thank you for every situation, every reconciliation, every transformation. Lord, I thank you for every victory and every battle that is won, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want it one more time. The count of three, everybody in this place, I want you to yell like the victory is there. Amen? Come on. One, two, three. Jesus! Woo! Thank you, Father! Yeah! Woo! Come on, give me praise. Come on. Now, I'm going to let you go back to your seat if you want to. But I want to sing one more time, okay? And that's up to you where you sing from. You can sing from up here. You can go back. It's up to your you, Kurt. Name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Yeah. Your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ. Oh, your name, your name, your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ. Your name, your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ. voices your name your name is victory your name your name is victory all praise 
will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Father, we just thank you. Yeah, come on, give him praise. Come on. Be seated if you want to. I'm going to leave that up to y'all. Y'all can stay up here. Woo. Kirk. Mm. Woo. I don't know about you guys, but I needed that. Come on. I needed that. We stand uh, in a place of victory. You see, a lot of us fight. A lot of us fight from a place of needing to win. When really we need to fight from a place of victory. You see, God's already done it. He's already given you the victory. He's already got it for you. There's this little thing called faith that we got to step into. And what you did this morning coming up here and doing a shout and just worshiping God was faith. You stepped out and you stepped up to what God had for you. And because you did that, come on, the Bible says that faith pleases God. I don't know if you realize, but you please God this morning. You pleased God this morning. You see, a lot of times we want to have a feeling inside. God, I just need to feel good, right? I just, I just, because when you go home, guess what the devil's going to do? He's going to pound on you. And you're in a place that you, you got something this morning. You got a little feel good this morning. But what you need to know is that regardless of the feel good, the word is what you stand on. Come on. The word is what you stand on. Because the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. Meaning that if I am in faith, I am pleasing God. So what you did this morning, what you need to do this afternoon, what you need to do tonight, what you need to do in the morning, what you need to do the next day, the next week, the next month. I don't know how long the battle's going to last. I don't know how long you're going to be going through whatever it is you're going through. But I know this, faith pleases God. You know, Jairus in the Bible he was the ruler of the time. We talked about him just a little bit last week. But Jairus in the Bible, he came to Jesus. He heard Jesus was coming to his hometown. And, and Jesus, before he could even step out of the boat, Jairus was standing there. And he said, Jesus, I need you to come to my house. And I need you to lay hands on my little girl because she's dying. Jesus said, okay. Why? There was probably hundreds of people that have asked him to go to the house. Why is this one recorded? I believe this one's recorded for a specific reason. And that is because Jairus had a specific thing that he asked Jesus to do. He said, my faith in you is coming to my house and laying hands on my daughter. That's where my faith is. And Jesus said, I can follow that faith. I can follow that faith. Now let me show you something else. When they were on their way to his house is where the woman with the issue of blood came in. You know, she's the one that snuck up, that touched the hem of his garment, 
out the back door like we said last week. Like, I got what I need. My faith is where it needs to be. I'm going out the back door. I don't even need you, Jesus. See, she understood the authority that was happening in Jesus. She understood where Jesus stood between heaven and earth and that the authority was his. And so all she needed was to touch him. Not even him, really. Just his clothes. But if you'll go read that in Mark chapter 5 about Jairus. All this is happening. The woman with the issue of blood comes up. She sneaks up. She gets her miracle. She's leaving. And Jesus stopped, right? He said, man, somebody has touched me that knows my authority. And they got what they need. Now think about this. Jairus' daughter was dying. And now Jesus is distracted from what Jairus thought they needed to do. And I'll show you how you know this, because when you go read it, okay, here's what happened. The whole situation with the woman with the issue of blood happened, right? And it happened for long enough that there was a servant that came from Jairus' house to Jesus. He came to Jairus. Jairus was standing next to Jesus and said, hey, don't bother the master anymore. He says, your daughter's already dead. Now, Jesus is standing there beside him. What's Jesus following? Come on, we said it earlier. It's not a trick question. He's following his faith, right? He's following Jairus' faith. Jairus' faith is, I need you to come touch my daughter so she'll be healed, right? So Jesus is standing here. The servant comes in, tells Jairus, listen, your situation is dead already. Don't bother the master because what you needed and where your faith was is already dead. Some of you guys are in a situation that's already dead. And so your faith has stepped out of the equation because it's already dead. But Jesus, come on, being Jesus, stood there. And he turned to Jairus. And he said, don't be afraid. You see, fear tries to creep in in your situation. Fear tries to keep you from getting a victory that it looks like it's already lost. Fear tries to stop you. So Jairus is standing there and he says, Jesus looked at him and said, listen, don't be afraid. Only believe. But Jesus, she's done dead. She already died. She's gone already. Where my faith was was gone. And Jesus was saying, don't lose faith in me because I'm a God of miracles. I'm a God that speaks to every Lazarus and tells them to come out when they're already dead. So he looked at him, he said, don't be afraid, only believe. So he had to make a switch. All right, God, I don't need you to come heal my daughter. I need you to come raise her from the dead. You see, sometimes we don't ever make the switch. Oh, you didn't hear me. Sometimes we don't ever make the switch from it looks dead and can't be resurrected to God, you're a God of resurrection power. You're a God that come up out of the grave when everybody else said you would stay in. You're a God that on the third day you rose up and not only did you come out of the grave, but you brought others out of the grave with you that walked upon as miracles on the earth. So in your situation, I'm going to tell you, don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Because the God that was going to heal a little girl is the God that went and raised her from the dead. Hmm. And when he raised her from the dead. You see, 
when Jesus walked into Jairus' house, he said, everybody get out. Everybody was moaning and wailing. Everybody around the family was like, listen, she's dead. Jesus comes in and says, hey, uh, it's all right, I got this. He said, uh, she, she's not dead, she's just sleeping. And the Bible says that everybody in the house started laughing. Because they couldn't see the miracle that needed to happen. But he didn't need everybody else's approval. Mm. He needed Jairus' faith. He was following after a man that was following after for his daughter. And so he said, you know what, everybody else just get out. You know, sometimes in your life, you need to get everybody out. Come on, you need to get everybody out that's telling you it's not possible, that you're going to fail, that what you're doing is why are you doing it? You need to kick everybody out, and you need to only listen to the one who has the answer. And if you're struggling, call Pastor Adam. I'll come stand with you. I'll come stand beside you and say, don't be afraid, only believe. I'll be the one next to you if you need somebody. Because we serve a miracle God. We serve a God that not only will heal, but raise him from the dead if he has to. You see, a lot of you are in a situation that's dead. God said, I'm going to raise it back up. And I'm going to make it better than it was before. Because he's just not a God of restoration. But he's a God that's going to make it better than it was. How many want it better? Come on, better than it is now. Better than what it was before. <laughs> come on, y'all. God said, if you'll just stick with me. Come on, if you'll just stay with me. I want to give you one scripture this morning. Not that I haven't given you scripture already. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, it says this. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, you see, he goes, he goes listen, and I really want you to get this. He says, don't worry about anything. And he could have stopped there. That would have been an amazing scripture, right? Man, I ain't got to worry. God's got me, right? But he goes, on, he goes on and he said, listen. He said, I'm giving you options. Anybody like options? Come on, you go to, I don't like going to a restaurant that I have one thing I have to pick from. Because the one thing, if it's got olives in it, I'm not eating it anyway. Got some good amens on that. I want options. I want to walk in and say, oh, you know, can you take that off? Can we put that on? Can we get that? You got pizza? That's really all I need. You got pizza? Is that an option? He said, I'm going to give you some options this morning. He said, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank him. For all he's done. Then. See there's results that happen. Because we do what the word says. You see when God gives us instructions. And we follow those instructions. There's results. And we don't even have to guess what the results are for this. Come on. Then you will experience God's peace, 
which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Your options today, you can worry or you can pray. You can worry about everything or you can pray about everything. And God said if you'll put aside the worrying, you see, worry is, is, is a result of not having enough word. And why do I say that? Because when you have word in your life, it says that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word. When I hear the word of God and I let it build me up inside, there's something that grows. It's faith. Faith is what allows you to please God. Faith is allow, uh, what allows you to stand in front of your brick wall and yell at it for a victory that you can't even see yet. And then God's not just going to topple the brick wall. He's going to sink it where it's no longer an issue. He said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And here's the key. Thank him. An attitude of thankfulness will lead to a life of peace. When you have an attitude of just simply thanking God for who he is and what he's doing and how he's going to do it, we can't see what's happening. Jairus had no clue. I'm coming to you because my daughter's dying. My daughter's dead. I don't, okay, I'll, I won't be afraid. Why? Because the word spoke to him and gave him a word. y'all get that the word spoke to him and gave him a word the word of God needs to speak to you and give you a word that you can stand on and have faith for and believe in because not because some some man somewhere once said it but because the God who lives in heaven said it. When God says it, come on, it's done. But in order for it to happen in our life, guess what we got to use? Got to use faith, don't we? We've got to grab a hold of it, pull it in, hang on to it with everything we've got. And he just told us how to do it. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. What option are we going to use today? What option are we going to walk with today? What option do we have sometimes? See, a lot of times we, we exhaust all of our options. Well, I'm done. I ain't got nothing left. And God's like, okay, now I'm right here. See, a lot of times he just waits for us to get everything else out of the way. Everything we think is going to happen. Everything we think needs to happen. See, I, I've given her all the medicine I could. I've, I've, I've searched all the doctors out that I could. I've, I've done everything I could. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years said she spent, the Bible says she spent everything she had and was none the better. But when she heard about Jesus, it says that she said to herself, if I can but just come behind him and touch the hem of his garment. That's all I need to do. You see, she heard something that built up faith. And when the Bible says that she said to herself, if you'll study that out in the Greek and the Hebrew, it means she continually said to herself, I just got to get to him. I've just got to touch him. I just got to touch all I, all I need to do is, that's, that's all I need is to touch him.
So if all the options are exhausted and you're at the point in the battle where you're like, I don't know how the victory is going to be won. Can I tell you that's a good place to be? Because that's the time in our life that it seems like we look to God the most. I don't know about you, but it seems like the, the times when I am not just exhausted at all, everything that's in the barrel, but sometimes I feel like I'm under the barrel. I feel like people are just, and then people are filling stuff up on tie in the barrel on top of me. And I don't know how I'm going to get out sometimes. But it's those times when, we, we, when we've exhausted everything in our life. It's those times when God's like, don't worry about anything. Just pray about it. And I've got peace for you that you don't even understand. I've got peace beyond your understanding that you can walk in. Father, I thank you this morning. Lord, I thank you that battles are being won. I thank you, Father, that we thought we had exhausted everything, but you, Father, never get exhausted. I thank you, Father, that at one point in time, you stopped the earth from moving so a battle could be won. If you're willing to stop the earth from rotating so a battle can be won, what are you willing to do in my life so I can win a battle? Father, I thank you this morning. The victory is in you. I thank you this morning that answers are in your word. I thank you this morning, Father, for what you're doing and how you're doing it. We may not understand it, Father. We may not understand where we're going. It, we may have come to you for a situation, but now it's dead. And, Father, only you can resurrect a situation, Father, in the way that only you do it. So, Father, I thank you this morning for resurrecting power. Father, I thank you for answering every situation with your word. In Jesus' name. If you would, keep your heads bowed just for a moment because I want to give people an opportunity because there may be some in here this morning that maybe you've never followed this Jesus that we talk about. Maybe you felt something this morning that you've never felt before. Maybe God is coming and he's just stirring your heart this morning and saying, you need to be following me. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to give you this opportunity. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask that you come up front. I just need you to do one thing with every head bowed. If you want to follow this Jesus that you've never followed before, or maybe you followed him in the past and you're like, man, I ran and I just want to come back. I just need you to do one thing this morning. Everybody's got their head bowed, their eyes closed. I just want to know, is God moving on your heart this morning to come back to him? If you would, just raise your hand this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Anybody else this morning? So here's what I want to do, congregation. Everybody keep your head bowed and your eye closed. I'm going to pray a prayer this morning. And for those of you that raised your hand, the entire congregation is going to pray this with you this morning so that you can get back in right standing with God. So this morning, I'm going to pray, and I just want you to, to just say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning. I seek your face this morning. I turn from my ways, and I turn to you. I believe in my heart that you are my Lord, and I confess it with my mouth. Father, take my life and change me. I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all give him a hand clap this morning. Now listen, I've got one more thing for you guys that raised your hand because there were several of you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to have you come up front or do any of that. But I do want I do want to get some information to you. So here's what I want you to do. We've got a number. Can we get that number? 
We've got, it says, uh, yes to Jesus. Number two, it'll be up on the screen. Will you text that, that uh, phrase, yes to Jesus, just like it is, to the, to the uh, number 97,000? And when you put yes to Jesus, we're going to get in contact with you and just see what you need. See how we can help you further your, your walk with God because God wants you to. Amen? You raised your hand for a purpose, and God has a purpose for you. Amen? Everybody was created on purpose for a purpose, and you have a purpose. Amen? So do that for me this morning, if you would, so that we can get in contact with you. So I just want to tell you that I love you this morning. Amen? Is that okay? I love y'all this morning. I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad y'all, the ones that came up front that, was, that are fighting a battle, keep on. God's got the victory. Amen? So we're going to change gears just real quick. We just need to take up our offering this morning. So if you want to give this morning, we've actually got three ways you can give. If you want to hook up with this church and, and follow the, what we're doing, you can go to our website and you can give online. You go to Connect Church of Abilene and you can hit the give button. You can, we have a Venmo account. If some of y'all have Venmo, you can Venmo the at Connect Church of Abilene. You can Venmo the money. And then you can just simply give in the offering. And if, you, if you're giving by cash this morning, we have offering envelopes. The ushers have got offering envelopes that we want to get to you. Uh, this morning, so you can fill those out. If you're giving by, by check, don't worry about it. Um, does anybody need an offering envelope? Just, just let the ushers know. We've got a few up here. We've got some in the back that need an offering envelope. So while they're doing that, while they're kind of passing out the offering envelopes, do we have some announcements, JB? So, all right, is baptism up there? Is that what's up there? 21 days. Ah, oh, I tried. I'll try not to turn around and look. I thought maybe I could get it. 21 days of, of prayer and fasting. We have seven more days. Actually, just six after today. We got six more days, Monday through Saturday. And I will encourage you, if you've not been coming, come. It has been some amazing time of prayer. And so we meet at 6 a.m. I know it's early. But you only got six more days. We've been doing this for the last 15. Come on. Six more days of prayer. If you can make it, I encourage you to come and make it. And then on Saturday, we sleep in a little bit. We don't, we don't meet till 9 a.m. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to be all, come Saturday, I, like that 9 a.m., I know, I know that's still early, but it, man, being able to sleep in until 9 is awesome. So y'all do that. So then we have water baptism, which is actually next Sunday, Correct. Next Sunday, we are going to have water baptism. So if you want to get baptized, those of you that, wrote, that raised your hand this morning to get saved, baptism's the next thing to do, just an outward appearance of what God's doing on the inside. So we have a sign-up sheet at the Connect Spot. Just stop by, sign up. We'll have a shirt for you. You just bring your clothes. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you everything you need. Man, I, that's, that's probably my favorite thing is water baptism. Man, I absolutely love baptizing people because it's, it's just they're, they're coming in to that. And so is there one more thing? Two more things? Oh, the two-year. Yeah, come on. The church, we have, come on. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. So it's, it's been two years of the church. But it's been about five years for Fair and I. It's been about five years of just believing God for everything that you guys see right now. And God's so good. Just some of y'all are new. I just want to let you know, you know, at our one year last year, I was able to stand up here in front of you guys and tell you that Connect Church is a debt-free church. Oh, y'all weren't as excited as I was about that. <laughs> God did some things that first year, brought us completely out of debt. Man, and I am so thankful for that. 
So the giving that you do, man, it goes to places, it goes to people, it goes to help situations. We give to food banks and we, we help people in the community and we do different things. So thank you for giving and, and, and helping us support what God's called us to do. So then, is there anything else? All right. So you guys stand with me this morning. So this is our offering confession. And this is really, like I tell you guys, this is a life confession. This last part, this healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous, is what I say over my life, my wife, my marriage, my kids, myself, daily. Because I believe this. I'm confessing this. And you're like, well, well, Pastor Adam, I'm not there yet. That's called faith. Confess it. Come on. Drill it into yourself. Look to him, the one with the authority. Amen? So if you would, let's, let's say this together this morning. As I give my tithes and offerings, I confess God is first in my life. I give with a cheerful heart because I love God. In 2020, I am healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that every person that is here, every person that is watching online, Father, is healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous, Father, through your blood and through your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give him some praise this morning. So we love you guys. Thank you guys for being here. The ushers will have the buckets at the back. If you have an offering, you can just drop it in. We also have the red buckets. You can, you can put them in in the back. Love you guys. Don't forget the midweek meal on Wednesday, um, Facebook Live. Love y'all. Y'all have a great week.